So everybody, I know there's there's been a lot of black pills lately, but here's a white pill. This is the feel-good story of the week. The Episcopal Church looks like it's finally going to die. Thank God. These guys are the worst. Actually, they literally might be the worst. Probably the worst denomination in North America is either them or the United Church. The United Church is worse, if, if that makes, if you can even like, imagine that actually i don't know it's it's close i did an article about the um episcopal church a little while back i'm pretty sure they were involved in that whole blessing abortion clinics and like saying that abortions were a spiritual experience and um yeah so in part i'm doing this because someone was like um argent i've heard this argument that christianity has to become more liberal and it has to accept all this stuff in order for it to remain relevant and for it to survive, uh, which is the exact opposite of reality because liberal denominations don't have young people. Um, it's it's pretty well known. I mean, if, if you hang out at all in online circles um, of people who are religious and who are young, the majority of them who actually go to church, who not, not who call themselves Christian, but who actually go to church, are very often conservative, uh, evangelical, Catholic, Orthodox, um, confessional Lutheran, uh, Orthodox, Presbyte uh, conservative Presbyterian. Um, partially because if, if you're liberal, you believe going to church doesn't matter. <laughs> so they adopt a theology that says, ah, you can go to church, you can not go to church, it doesn't really matter. We're trying to stay relevant, and people don't. Um, it's it's like traditional Catholicism is like gothic and mysterious and orthodoxy is is once again mystical and just very out of place in the modern world it's very reverent and then you have people who are blessing abortion clinics I mean it just doesn't appeal to anybody except for like aging baby boomers uh, but they'll be dead soon and they they don't even go to church anymore so so someone asking about that and don't get me wrong the catholic church is in a really sorry state um and the evangelical church has had a lot of troubles and i have a lot of issues with them uh but compared to the the more liberal denominations we're doing pretty good um people still actually convert to us i don't know how many people convert to episcopalianism so anyways let's get into this article why the episcopal church is near collapse thank god Prominent bishops are pulling out. Convention goers were told headquarters has spent $18 million suing local congregations. <laughs> Members are leaving at a record rate. This is no longer George Washington's church, once the largest denomination in the colonies. The headlines coming out of the Episcopal Church's annual U.S. convention are stunning. Endorsement of cross-dressing clergy, blessing same-sex marriage, the sale of their headquarters since they can't afford to maintain it. I wonder how that happened. Thank God. The American branch of the Church of England founded when the Va Vatican balked at permitting Henry VIII to continue annulling marriages to any wife who failed to ban bear him sons is in trouble. And this is the phenomenon we're seeing. And we'll talk a bit more about this later. Uh, oh, sorry. One second. I'm just going to read this paragraph. <laughs> Somehow slipping out of the headlines is the harsh reality that the denomination has deserted in droves by an angry or ambivalent membership. Six prominent bishops are ready to take their large diocese out of the American church and align with conservative Anglican groups in Africa and South America. So Anglicanism was always kind of awkward because it's kind of an ethnic religion and kind of not. It's, it's kind of like a, a religion specific to the English people and to the other people, the British Isles. But because of the British Empire, it really spread to countries like Nigeria, in places like that and what it kind of when it was most successful it built itself as being kind of independent catholicism it was kind of like okay we're, we're like catholicism in every way but we aren't as strict and we don't have papal authority and it's a bit more decentralized and that was kind of how they build themselves um at least for a while the problem with that is while they kind of gain success often by becoming more anglo-catholic 
what often happens is the people are like, why don't I just become Catholic at that point? It, it doesn't really matter. So the Anglican Church has always kind of had this bizarre mixture of Anglo-Catholics, Evangelicals, uh, Calvinists. It's really kind of spread all over the place. And you have these, these movements that separate from it. And you get the bizarre phenomenon of like the largest Anglican Church in the world being in Nigeria. And it's weird because it's this like explicitly English thing that's in just other parts of the world. It's just very weird, uh, I guess is a way to put it. It's not even just people of English descent. It's it's like people of just different ethnic groups. It, it just always struck me as odd. It's always struck me as kind of being a bit like um, Anglos or Germans converting to Eastern Orthodoxy, which I do consider an ethnic religion. It, it's just It's just strange to me. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, so a lot of people who want to stay Anglican wind up joining the leadership of a southern church. And then after they, they do that, it, it's just kind of like, what's even the point? A lot of people just join Catholicism then. It's just because it's, it's too much of a hassle. Because you have to find a, a conservative Anglican church that's aligned with your particular denomination. So just... just bite the bullet become catholic there's a catholic church in like every town on earth so let's see here um an interesting moment came at the press conference on saturday when i asked bondi anderson president of the house of deputies if she saw the irony in that the house of deputies would like to see uh would like to sell their uh headquarters at the same time the national church spent 18 million dollars litigating for properties many of which lie follow at the end of the day there is no longer george washington this is no longer george washington's episcopal church in 1776 the largest denomination the rebellious british colonies membership has dropped so dramatically that there are 20 times more baptists than episcopalians i'm actually shocked there's that many episcopalians left u.s catholics uh, U.S. Catholics outnumber Episcopal Church 33 to 1. There are more Jews than Episcopalians. Oosh. <laughs> Twice as many Mormons as Episcopalians. I thought there was more Mormons. Even the little little African Methodists. It, I guess if you looked at the number of actively practicing Mormons versus actively practicing Episcopalians, it would probably be a lot higher. Even the little African Methodist Episcopal dot nomination. That sounds really lame. Uh, has passed the Episcopalians. Uh, among the old stream mainstream denominations, the Episcopal Church has suffered the worst loss of membership, plunging by like a third for 32% loss in the last 10 years. Wow. It is just collapsing. Uh, let's see. They've sent, they spent $18 million this year suing their own congregations, uh, which uh, those of which have protested the denomination's policies by trying to secede. The New York hierarchy has consistently won in court, asserting that the local members signed their buildings over decades ago. As a result, some of the largest United uh, Episcopal congregations in the United States have been forced to vacate their buildings and meet elsewhere. So the people are like, this is this is shit, we're going to leave. Uh, they're like, no, you, you can't leave with the building. So you're having this phenomenon of just all these empty churches uh, that they have to sell off Anyways, uh, so convention, the denomination is once the proud owner of scores of empty buildings uh, nationwide and liable for the upkeep in a depressed real estate market where empty church buildings are less than prime properly. It's the classic dog in a managed ma manger. The denomination has managed to keep the buildings for which it has no use. However, they make their made their point refusing to allow congregations which had built the facilities to have any benefit after generations of sacrifice, donations, and volunteerism. Like my church is pretty much entirely funded by congregation donations and volunteer hours. I don't think we get any money from the diocese. In fact, we give money to the diocese. So you're you're basically punish you're basically taking away properties which have really not a lot of real estate value. From people who were sustaining them so it just it's a net loss the irony is yeah they're losing their main property <clears throat> but this cost-cutting measure may not be enough to salvage the long-term solvency of the episcopal church 
the church is, is hemorrhaging money like crazy and no one seems to know how to turn off the spigot. Well, they're liberals. They just spend. They don't understand. They have high time preference. The accelerating fragmentation of the strife-torn Episcopal Church in which large parishes and entire dioceses are opting out of the church isn't simply about gay bishops, shudder, the blessing of same-sex union, shudder, or the election of women as presiding bishops. Oh, it's about the meltdown of liberal Christianity. Liberal Christianity has been hailed by its boosters for 40 years as the future of the Christian church. Nope. Instead, all, if you look at uh, Catholic parishes, the only ones that have vocations, like priests, uh, nuns, that kind of thing, are traditional ones. They have a lot of youth vocations. Liberal Catholic parishes have virtually none. The next generation of priests is going to be a lot more conservative than the older generation. So the older generation are all hippies. Uh, the younger generation are a lot more traditional. Uh, liberal Christianity has been... okay. Mainline churches have blurred doctrine and softened moral principles are declining and the end disintegrating. Good. Okay, so it gets worse on the next page. Presiding Bishop Catherine Jeffer Jefferts Scory preached her brand of post-Christian religion while masquerading as a Christian bishop. There's so many things wrong with that sentence, I'm not going to go into it. She mocked most of the crucial doctrines of the Christian faith, including God of creation, the incarnation, and the trinity. She accomplishes this, this through her demeaning use of rhetoric. She taunts the Lord by using the name Big Man, and then points her finger at everyone listening, and tells them they have missed the boat. Well, she's probably going to go to hell, um, because... The only sin that is unforgivable is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, um, which is, in, from my understanding, saying you don't need to be saved or deliberately rejecting God. Um, not, not rejecting God because of uh, some other cause, but deliberately doing it as an act of will. Uh, she then proclaims that she was the answer. She has the answer for this. We all, we all need the act of crossing boundaries to become God after which our hands become a sacrament of mission. That That isn't even like good English. She don't speak good. Um, now, it, it is true that God became man so man could become God. Uh, God with a, a lowercase g, but they're clearly using an uppercase g here. In this sermon, let's see here. Uh, wide wake of destruction. The eternal triune God has been cor uh, torn down. Human beings are too boldly claim our place as God, and the sacraments of the Eucharist and baptism have been turned into things our hands make. Uh, so yeah, so she is against God and for the divinization of humanity. Not that humanity isn't divine in a sense, because we possess rational souls, and we're the closest thing in this world uh, to being like God. I mean, the angels are obviously the closest thing overall, but yeah. Uh, Episcopalians need to loudly affirm that we are created in the image of God and redeemed by the sacrifice of God. But no, we are God ourselves, and we are not erasing the boundary between God and humanity. Uh, encouraging humans to cross the frontier into becoming God should be immediately repudiated by all believing Christians. Uh, the only man who... Well, no, he was God who became man, not man who became God. Uh, let's see here... A new uh, transgendered clergy. Um, that's that's great. Some Episcopalian bishops spoke out against the resolution, uh, rejecting the re resolution for because the church has for two thousand years, in line with the Bible and the teach of the church fathers, said it's it's a bad idea. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, so no, because they know better than Jesus. Um, they know better than, than God made flesh. Um, they know better than, than flesh in the form of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's see. Uh, it was in meltdown. Good. Unchanging uh, commitment to Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the only name by which any person may be saved, was extremely disturbing. Yep, that's, uh, that's disturbing. That's the entire basis of their religion. And that's why these people are such scum. And one of the lowest circles of hell is um is saved for false prophets i mean if these people would go and found their own religion and not call it christianity that would be that would be fine 
But in my mind, a Christian is someone who confesses and agrees with the Apostles and Nicene Creed, because that's been the statement of orthodoxy for pretty much every denomination since Christianity started. Obviously, the, the Nicene Creed was established at the Council of Nicaea, but the Apostles' Creed was based on the old Roman symbol, which predated it. And I think we've seen that in like second century AD. I'd have to look that up again. But the old Roman symbol was based on a confession of faith that Paul made in the Bible. So it's it's pretty much there since the beginning. So it evolved over time. Evolution doesn't mean it changed. They just kind of filled it out uh, to cover more and more issues because they had to resolve the Aryan controversy and some other stuff. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, permission to pull out. When a Christian dirge cannot br uh, bring itself to support the most basic principles of Christianity, it's no longer a church. It's all this talk about sex and transgender that. There's absolutely no talk about sin. A psychologist friend of mine opined the talk that sin here would be considered psychologically damaging and offensive to a lot of people, especially gays. Because AIDS isn't psychologically damaging, nor is um, any of the other diseases. Um, also, uh, trans being transgendering is is not also not psychologically damaging. Uh, there, there's, there's not a higher suicide rate around. Them. Don't look at that. The National Episcopal AIDS Coalition is handing out free male and female condoms to all passers-by. I pocketed a few just in case some folks don't believe me. So we've gone from loaves and fishes. We've gone from Jesus healing the blind uh, to giving people condoms so that they can have they can just fuck more, um, and and it's it's just kind of most of modern religion is based around this idea muckummies. Um, if if you try to get in the way of me coming more, uh, then that's bad. Let's see here to keep funding for youth ministries. Uh, let's see here could stay alive if it got into recycling. Yep, recycling. And don't get me wrong, I am, I do consider myself like a right-wing environmentalist. Um, God gave us the earth and taking care of the earth is a, a religious duty. But that's not the primary goal of Christianity. The primary goal of Christianity is to achieve salvation through our faith and commitment to Jesus Christ. And to spread the, the good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world so that all of humanity may be saved. That is our goal as Christians. Recycling is not our goal. Is there social aspects of Christianity? Of course there are. There always have been. But when you replace the basic idea of bringing salvation and, rever and reverence for our Lord and Savior, then that is that is what, what it is. Uh, let's see here. Are pulling out, uh, are growing instead of shrinking. Yeah, the ones that are leaving are growing. Um, in Texas... The, uh, let's see here, one of the largest diocese uh, conservative Anglican churches have more worshippers than entire dioceses. Uh, once the conservatives were pulling out have no confidence in the denomination's presiding bishop, the arch liberal. Uh, she uses the phrase Mother Jesus in a sermon. Mother Jesus. We all have a mother. Her name's the Virgin Mary. Uh, mother of God, uh, Queen of Queen of Heaven. She's our mother. Jesus isn't our mother. He's our father. Um, it's, yeah. I don't know. A lot of Protestants just seem to hate Mary for some reason. I've seen a lot of them who just, and this is a side note, who call her like the incubator. I've seen some who call her a whore. Um, and they just hate her. Let's see here. They're leaving because, yeah. He declared that religious people are the enemy. We have allowed the Bible to be taken hostage as being wielded by folks who use it to hit us over the head. The sin of Sodom has nothing to do with homosexual sex, but was a failure to care for the poor, the widows, and the orphans. I don't think it said that the Bible, I think it said that they were all fucking each other. And I, I use that word fuck to be like deliberately, It's I know it's a strong word, but yeah. Uh, let's see here. The, de the sick, they are sick to death of liberals telling them gay is okay. Anglicanism is in deep trouble. Uh, 
let's see here. 46 members of the Church's General Synod in Parliament have expressed hope of uh, secessionism. Um, like, I probably would have become an Anglican instead of a Catholic if they hadn't have had female ministers. To me, that's just one of the worst things possible. Uh, let's see here. Gene Robertson. Robinson deserted his wife and children to take up with a homosexual lover. That's degenerate for any number of reasons. Divorce is degeneracy. Uh, she has adulterous infidelity, severely compounded by sexual sin and perversion. Uh, let's like these are these are the people. Um, it's just... So yeah, so these people are are dying out. Thank God. Uh, what'll be left of the church will be smaller, but I think it has a future. Um, we can eventually retake the West. We can we can grow out again. But nobody likes a pussy. And um, I, I think it was Osama bin Laden who said, when people see a strong horse and a weak horse, people tend to favor the strong horse. Will that horse be smaller? Will we have fewer horses? Yes. And I'm not talking about LARPing in the woods, collapse, like having five people in some splinter Mormon sect. There is, a, even if we do lose a lot of people, the Catholic Church and the Evangelical Churches and the other conservative Protestant churches will have enough people to rebuild. We have a future. It may be a dark and difficult future, but there is a future. There's no future for these people. And, and it's a good thing. And the sooner they die out and the sooner they stop profaning Christ's name with their, their lies and calumnies, the better. This is Argent signing out.